What's up guys, it's Roger and welcome back to the channel. And today we're playing some more Trials of Osiris, gonna be on Wormhaven this weekend. And of course I wanted to do a more aggressive Warlock build because I like flying in on this map if I can, getting on top of people's nut sacks and absolutely tearing them off with my teeth. And that's what we're trying to do with this build. We can start here with the actual mods and armor, of course. Uh, I do just have on a regular Astrocyte build, going in balls to the wall with our blink plays, as you'll see in the gameplay. We'll talk about that more when we get there. Now you're gonna see, I just have some regular targeting stuff on for my hand cannon, some unflinching as well. Three ways we can make orbs of power. One is going to be uh, getting a kill with our grenade. The other is getting a kill with our empowered melee. And of course I have two of those on, so that's actually gonna be a higher tier orb. And then last but not least is getting a kill after we use our rift. Uh, if we do pick up those orbs, we're gonna get three ways that we get benefits from those. First is innervation, second is absolution, and third is orbs restoration. You can pause if you really wanna read these in depth, but essentially they're just gonna give us a bunch of ability energy back each time we do pick an orb up. After that, if we do put a rift down, we're getting around 20% of our grenade energy back from two bomber mods. Pretty simple from our weaponry here, when I want to be more aggressive and kind of try hard, I usually just put a 140 hand cannon on because you can just land some sauce three taps and take your enemies out at record speed. Of course, I'm going to be using the Ostringer here, which is one of my favorite hand cannons in the entire game. You can see you're at level 65, so I've used it a pretty solid amount. Of course, I have Hammer Forge Rifling, Ricochet Rounds, Enhanced Eye of the Swarm, and Enhanced Range Finder, and then I do have two excess on here, but this one does not really matter too much. So overall, pretty good hand cannon right here, very good range on it, great stability. It takes the enemies out quite well. The stability goes through the roof when you actually do get low health, so you can win your ones very, very solidly. If we want to be even more balls to the wall than that, then we are going to pull out our retold tail shotgun. This, of course, is going to be a precision frame shotgun of the void archetype, so we can fly in with our blink on top of people with this and take them out. Very good stuff right here, and you'll see a lot of plays with the shotgun in the gameplay today. When it comes to our Void 3.0, it's a pretty simple setup. Of course, we have a Nova Bomb on here so we can shut down those wells and those bubbles. Then we have on a Healing Rift because that's way better than Empowering Rift. I, I like Empowering Rift. It's fun and some goofy builds, but overall, you're going to usually want a Healing Rift. Now, we do have Blink on, of course. I'm not some little floaty freak, so I like to use my Blink. But if you do want to use your little floats, you're not going to be as good at being aggressive. You can't get on top of your enemies as well, but uh, you know, you can figure that out. Now, over here, we do have Pocket Singularity. There's so many other choices for melees on our Void Warlock. You know, when I always come down here and I say, what Void Warlock? melee do I want to use today? It's tough to choose, you know? Of course, we have this one right here, uh, the, the melee of absolute aristocrats, and I like that one a lot. Of course, we have Achilles Tendon down here that we can shoot in our enemies. That one's great. We have Aristotle's Butthole right here, you know, one of my favorite melees in the entire game, but I usually come back to the classic pocket singularity because it's just too good to not use. Now, over here, I'm going to be using the Axion Bolts. We're going to use those to pinch our enemies between the Axion Bolt and ourselves. We throw it behind them, they're going to start running away, and then we can take shots at them with our hand cannon or fly in with our shotgun, and this do some good damage to warm them up or either take them out. Now, of course, for our aspects, I'm going to be using the two that really matter, which is Child of the Old Gods, or as we call them on my channel, Clarence, and Feed the Void, which of course is going to give us Devour whenever we can get a kill with one of our actual abilities. Now, down here, since we do have four fragment slots from these two aspects, we're going to have on Echo of Dilation, which is one fragment that I recommend you always use on your Void Warlock. It's too good not to use. You get 10 flat mobility and intellect, which is of course very nice, but the big thing about this is that you actually get a very in-tuned radar when you're crouched, so you can pick apart exactly where your enemies are and use that information to know when you want to aggress upon them. Them. When you're doing a very aggressive build like this, that's information that you highly need, so I very much recommend you use this Echo right here. Now next up is going to be an Echo of Persistence. This said Void Bus applied to you so your invisibility over shield and devour have increased duration. That's going to make the initial proc of your devour go from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. Now over here we're going to have Echo of Expulsion, so whenever we do get a kill with our Void abilities, they're going to explode a secondary time. If enemies are holding hands like they're a mommy and daddy inside of the mall, then that's going to blow them up pretty darn easily, and we love to see it. After that, to finish it off here, we do have Echo of Vigilance. This says a target when your shields are depleted will give you a void over shield. Now, I do want to keep in mind, this is going to be a minus 20 recovery with these two echoes on, so make sure you can keep yourself a 100 recuff. Pretty simple stuff though, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section or join the Blinkville Discord server. I'm going to have that link in the top right and in the description. If you do want to support the channel that extra little bit, that extra little mile, I'd really appreciate it if you join my channel membership. I'm going to have that right below. If you click the join button below this video, you can check out all the perks on that. It's like $4.99 per month is one tier and the other tier is $0.99 cents per month. But if you just want to leave this video a like and a view, I'd very much appreciate that just as much. All that being said, I think we're ready to go ahead and get in this gameplay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and blink on into it. Now I gotta say this weekend has really summoned the toxic Roger out of me because it's been very laggy for me. I don't know if you guys have noticed this weekend has been more laggy for you also, but I'm getting a lot of bad registration either on my sword plays, which you won't see in this gameplay today because I only give you the good sword plays when I pick up the heavy, but a lot of ghost bullets too, you know, just a, a lot of annoying things due to lag. You know, you never want to see that. Um, or other than that, you know, just the same abuse. Of course, if you didn't see this last week's trials report, there's a very funny thing, which is that all hunters and warlocks combined 
are only about 3% more playtime on them than all Arc Titans. Yeah, that's right. That's how much the player base is just spamming and abusing Arc Titan. And it's ruining the entire game. And somehow it still hasn't been addressed. And it's been driving me crazy for a while now, but my god, like, uh, I don't know. I guess it's reached a breaking point at some point, and it's just, it's it's here, and it's like, what the hell? You guys gotta, I don't know, grow some brain cells, think for yourself for two seconds. There's so much fun stuff in this game, so many fun ways to play, like we do on our blink here, but people would just rather run in and go punch, and it's like, holy shit, you're so boring. Honest to god, you're just little normie norm, sitting in your cubicle at work, pushing paper all day. That's all you do. That's your entire job. Hey, here's a little heavy round for you, by the way. Pick up the actual eager edge right there. Slide in. Slash this guy's bussy open like a nice little BB&J. Of course, shitty sword rec uh, recognition is going to make it to where it didn't actually hit the first time. So I had to take a second slash, which means I die. Uh, shout out to Cranky Panky, by the way, though. One of my puffer people, one of my subs, and one of my good friends nowadays who actually joined up with me into a little two stack here for most of the gameplay you're going to be seeing today. Makes some absolutely amazing plays, and it's always nice to go in with a two stack. Of course, three stack's nice too, but having a two stack is just nice because you don't have that one person you know you can actually depend on who plays maybe similar to you so you know they'll probably follow you up very well in these plays and that's something he did the entire day so thank you cranky for actually joining up with me i really much appreciate that now coming in here there's like something I, I do want to talk about and i'm gonna do a little uh story time with papa roger here before we get into it so a while ago i started doing something this was many months ago and i said you know what there's a lot of cheaters in this game. There's a lot of scumbags in this game. Cheesers, meta abusers, just toxic people all around, whatever it may be. I want a way where I can track them. So as soon as I enter into a match, I can press my social screen and I can go, oh yeah, look, these guys are some toxic pieces of shit. These guys are some cheaters, whatever it may be. So what I started doing is blocking anybody who was toxic, anybody who I thought was cheating, anybody who was cheesing their ass off, you know? If they were just a little scumbag, I put them in the absolute gulag you know i didn't want to see him anymore and then what happens whenever i enter a match what i do is i go to my social screen and i look at the enemy team and i see who's blocked so if i enter a match and i immediately see somebody's blocked well i know that they're going to be a little shit stain it's a great way to keep track of toxic players of cheesers of the cheaters i encounter and eventually i start learning the names more because they always just glow red when i first enter a match now that was a great strategy and i'm glad i did it but I found something out today, and this is probably something that almost nobody else knows about Destiny 2. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to pause the gameplay here really quick, so sorry, put this on screen right now, there you go, editing Roger, thank you very much. Now, is this blowing your mind right now? Because this is what I found out. You can only block a max of 1,500 people. And I fucking hit it today, baby. I went to go block somebody, and that popped up on my screen. We'll go ahead and take it down now, I think you've seen it long enough. But that popped up on my screen right there. So now you know, you can only block up to 1,500 people, and I have 1,500 people blocked. So now if I block somebody on this game, they're only going to be temporarily blocked until I log out of the game, and then they're going to be unblocked. And that's just so funny to me. First of all, seriously, we can't have an unlimited block list. You know, the kind of the point of blocking people is because we don't want to deal with them, so we block them. Now I will say the block feature in this game is pretty minuscule, pretty pathetic, pretty worthless. Uh, that, you know, they just like can't DM you. In other games, you block people and it makes the door you're not going to match make with them. Um, games don't do that as often now because it can really fuck up your actual like matchmaking pools. Because obviously if you have a bunch of people blocked, then they can't be put into your games. So then eventually you'd keep running out. And I guess you could probably abuse that by just blocking a bunch of good players only and then you could match those good players so you could just keep smacking shitters because those are the only ones that wouldn't be blocked for you. Really nice nade there, by the way. Pinched that guy between my nade and my fat fucking fist and slapped him into the dirt. Uh, so that's probably why most games do not have the type of blocks where you just can't match with them. Yo, shout out to Chili, by the way. He said good luck in trials, and I was like, you know what? Thank you, Chili. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. He was sick recently. Everybody say, feel better, Chili, in the comments. Make this make this guy feel proud of himself. Just make, make him feel special. He's a good kid. Now, that being said, I just had to show that to you guys because it just blew my mind. I showed it to my friends and then the screenshot, and we were all cracking up like, holy hell. I did not know you could do that, and I've never heard anybody else ever talk about that, so you probably, most of you are pretty surprised right now, didn't know that. Uh, if you did know that, then let me know, that's just pretty funny to me, so I had to print that up to you guys and have a little laugh about that. 
Now, all that being said, why don't we go ahead and talk about this gameplay just a little bit. You know, we'll stop with the Toxic Rider real quick, and we'll talk about the actual build we got going on here. Obviously, you can see I'm going in a lot with the shotgun here, blinking in on people, being very aggressive, using our blink and extra sight first, so we can get to parts of the map, like the middle of the map, very much quicker than our enemies, and take them by surprise. But we can also use it for times like this, when I want to go in, get on top of my enemies very quickly, and take them out with a good push. Take them out with a good shotgun push, specifically. But on top of that, we can do things like this. If Heavy is spawning, which it always spawns in this same spot in the middle here, you can use your blinks to get here faster than anybody else, just like I did right here. Now, unfortunately, I had to take some shots at these enemies, so my teammate grabbed the heavy, but that was no big deal for me, as I got a one kill with my nade right there, which procced my devour. I get some good shots on the next guy, teammate takes him out, and uh, one of them actually rage quit after that round, because, I mean, they, they, they were pretty ass, you know, they were getting their cheek holes slapped around, so... It's all right, you know, leave the match if you got to. I'll just clap up your last two teammates and get to the next one. But this is also another strategy I like to do. Especially round one, like this, you can see you can fly in right towards the top mid, throw in your Axiom Bolt, and start taking shots. You can also come from the down on the outside of the map, uh, below window, throw your Axiom Bolt upwards, and it'll land right around where I just died right here, where these people are standing. You can then blink up into window with your shotgun out, and keep pushing in with your Axiom Bolt to take out your enemies. So keep that in mind, there's a lot of good pushes you can do in combination with your Axiom Bolt and your blink. You can use your blink like this too to get around the side of the map really quickly and play people's radars like this You see they saw me on their radars here, which is great for me because guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bait them. I know I have a better shot So I'm just gonna shoulder peek pop up really quick smack this guy's head off I have the storm procs of course I get my echo of vigilance and my teammates of course being pretty darn solid are gonna take out the other two Especially that's what I'm saying when you're with a good duo you can actually trust them to take the other fights while you go ahead and win a one, you know? I two-tap the other enemy first before I even three-tap that guy, so he was low walking into my other teammates. He had to go heal, which let my teammates take probably a 2v1 while I then won my one, and then they finished off their last 2v1. It's stuff like that. This round right here, that's what I mean. You get to that heavy so quickly. And that's what's so good about this build. It's extremely aggressive and easy to be aggressive with it and be successful with that aggression. Again, another heavy round. Look how quickly I got here. I throw my Axiom Bolt up towards the top. That's going to deter any enemies from flying at me. And then, once they're deterred, because then they have to shoot that Axiom Bolt, I just pick up the heavy. I blink forward, I take one out with it. I saw this guy was over to my left on the actual uh, radar before I flew in, so I made sure I blinked uh, to my left and actually took him out, you know. And then I come up on this last guy, blink, sword play on him again, but uh, unfortunately, you know, Cranky stole my kill there. It's whatever, you know. He's a cool guy. I might kiss him on the lips, so it's like, you know, I, I, what? I got hacked there. I got, uh, somebody, somebody hacked my account right there. I did not say that. Now, that being said, you can always come into here as well, especially if the flag is down here. Uh, make sure you're actually placing your rift more so ahead of where I place mine there so you get behind the wall when you place it. I placed mine a little farther back just because I didn't get an actual slide like I thought I was going to when I landed. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're actually placing those rifts when you come in the middle here behind some solid cover and you can take some good fights with your 140 hand cannon. You see, on this map, you can use your long range pretty effectively. You can use a 120. You can use Graviton Lance, which is something a lot of people are spamming right now, which is a great choice if you want to. Um, I prefer the 140 just because you can sit around areas like this and once people push up to you, you're in your optimal range right here, you know, so you can just team shot really, really easily, especially if your teammates are using 140s, you can all team shot with each other very well, so that's why I do prefer 140s on this map, but if you do want to sit back with a sniper or a pulse rifle, it's a very good option. I saw there was a guy behind me on radar here before I blinked forward, but I saw also Cranky was maybe going to fight him and he actually won his one with him, which was perfect. Since I took out that first guy, let's keep in mind, I procced my Echo of Vigilance. That gave me a full Void Overshield, which let me challenge the second guy with a lot of extra confidence. Since I have 100 Recov, I fully healed before I went in and fought him. That means, with the extra shielding that I had from my Echo of Vigilance, I was able to suck up his entire shotgun blast, and just one blast him with my shotgun, and live. And that's the great thing about Echo of Vigilance. That's why I like it so much. You can use it to just go ahead and gas pedal your enemies and take them out very effectively. Getting up behind this guy with my blink here, I take him out with a nice pocket singularity in combination with my friend's uh, shots there and some solid stuff. You can blink here at the beginning of a round. Be careful because people will spam grenades at you, but you can also spam your nade right back. Take some nice shots, get Clarence in there, and we are freaking cooking with fire. Take one out with the Axion Bolt there. I told Cranky, I was like, you know, you should be using Axions too because he was using Scatter Nades, which Scatter Nades, still a great choice, but... I really like the Axion. It's got to say, great hand cannon name here when I came in. Eventually, I got on point with my hand cannon name. Um, I haven't used 140s too, too much lately. Uh, last weekend, I was using Waking Vigil, which felt really good. I love using 140s. I'm honestly in a bit of a 140 like kick right now. I just want to use them a lot. Um, I know some people say that they can't use 140 hand cannons. I promise you, you can. Um, a big thing with 140s is honestly, you need to build a good amount of player skill before you feel very solid with 140s. It takes a long time. It really does. Because you're really wanting to hit headshots be super effective with your 140s, you know? As soon as you're not 
three tapping with your 140? Uh oh, you missed once and you hit the body? You're gonna make your TTK go way higher. So that's what's the big, you know, risky thing with 140s. Um, but once you get your player skill higher, you'll start to eventually, like, it'll just click for you. And you'll start going off those 140s, so keep that in mind. Now, well, that being said, we are coming into our last play here. Uh, our last two plays, I will say. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you do want to leave a like or subscribe, that would just make my day. So thank you so much for that. Um, and if you would like to join my puffer people, like I said, click the join button below this video. You can check that out. And if you want to check out my Blink Hunter build for this uh, map, go ahead. I'm going to have that linked on the end screen, so you can go ahead and watch that next. And I hope you do enjoy it. All that being said, I think I'm going to let this last play just go ahead and play out for you guys. And that is it for me today. So as always... Have a great day, Guardians.